Back in July, Rishi Sunak, our Chancellor of the Exchequer, gave a strong indication that he was about to break the state pension triple lock, which, if he did, would see a major U-turn in the Conservative government's promise to keep the triple lock system until 2024. Alas, fast forward to September and the government have just announced that they will be suspending the triple lock system for one year. But what on earth is the triple lock? And what does this actually mean for us? And is this U-turn by the government justified? That's what we'll be talking about in today's episode. So without further ado, I'm Kozan from Financial Madness, helping you be better with your money. So what is the triple lock? This was introduced in 2010 by the UK government to guarantee that the state pension would not lose value in real terms. Now they did this by introducing a measure to make sure that the state pension would rise year on year to combat inflation. Now, the way they made this guarantee more secure was by introducing three separate measures of inflation, hence the name triple lock. So the state pension will increase each year to whichever of the following three measures is the highest. The first measure is average earnings, the second measure being the consumer price index or CPI, with the third measure being 2.5%. So this effectively means that with the triple lock, that means our state pension will grow year on year by at least 2.5%. So let's just take an example. Say in one particular year, average earnings grew by 3%, CPI was at 2%. That means that the state pension would grow by what the average earnings was telling us, because that is the highest at 3%. So the state pension would increase by 3%. In another year, average earnings and CPI were around the 2% mark. That means the state pension would increase by 2.5% as that is the minimum that is allowed by the triple lock. So although this is great for pensioners as it ensures that our state pension spending power is in line with the steady rise in prices or even surpasses it in some cases, it is no secret that this triple lock has proved a bit of an annoyance for successive governments because it is very expensive to maintain and is very costly to the taxpayer. There has been several discussions and pushes, particularly by Theresa May when she was in power, by suggesting a double lock system, so removing the guaranteed 2.5%. However, these measures have been pushed and avoided so far. So what are the changes? Now, this all stems from when the Bank of England suggested that a post-pandemic rise in average earnings could see it rise up to 8%. And therefore, we would see this 8% reflected in the growth of our state pension if all things stay the same. However, when you compare it to other increases in the state pension over the last decade, you can see that this 8% number greatly surpasses the average which probably roughly stands between 2 to 3%. Therefore, costing the government greatly, who are under massive pressures to start reeling in at some of the money that they've been spending to make sure that the economy stayed afloat during the COVID-19 pandemic. So what they have decided is that from the next financial year, so that would be 2022 to 2023, the average earning element of the triple lock will be dropped, and therefore, the state pension will only increase by the consumer price index or 2.5%. So why this change? So it is pretty obvious that we have had a very unusual two years and it is heavily argued that the reason why we are seeing this unusual increase in average earnings is that it is just an, anom an anomaly caused by the impact COVID-19 has had on our UK economy. And this is basically the argument the government are running with to try and justify why they have decided to make such a sharp U-turn on their promise, on their manifesto, to keep the triple lock until 2024. So I did do some further research to better understand the link between the COVID-19 pandemic and its impact on the average earnings to see if this argument was justified. And I found a really good page that was provided by Bloomberg, and I'll put a link in the description box down below if you want to have a further read. And I'll be using some of the diagrams um, as I talk you through this. So basically, this big push on average earnings is mostly made up by the fact that since the country has come out of lockdown, the job market has now since been gaining traction with more and more jobs being made available 
to the working sector. And it is this sharp increase in job opportunities, which usually means that people will begin to start earning more money, coupled with the fact that average earnings actually took a massive tumble at the very beginning of the pandemic in the early 2020. This means that we will see a disproportionate increase in average earning rates. And therefore, we can see that there is a link between the COVID-19 pandemic and its impact on the economy and its impact on why average earnings is seeing such a sharp increase to 8%. So is this justified? Now, there was a statement taken from the BBC by a Caroline Abrahams, who is the chair director of Age UK, which is the leading charity for elderly people. And she said it quite nicely. So she said, if suspending the triple lock for a single year helps get the government deal on social care over the line, then I believe it is a price worth paying. But only if this is just a one-off measure and not a sneaky way for ministers to ditch the triple lock altogether. And personally, I fully agree with her statement. We do have to acknowledge that last two years were out of the ordinary. And if suspending the triple lock for one year helps ease the pressures on our social care, then I am all for it. Especially when you consider that under this suspension, the minimum 2.5% guarantee to our state pension hasn't actually been dropped. And when you look at the last few years, you can see that it has been hovering around about the 3%, 2.5% region anyway. So I don't think it's going to be a massive impact when we look at averages. However, I can't help but think that this is probably the scapegoat the government have been looking for to finally ditch the triple lock as they have made no secret in the past to try and do so before. So yeah, I'm actually going to be very surprised if this just stands at a one year suspension. I don't think we will probably see a return of the triple lock uh, in the future, but that is just my opinion. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. And as always, if you did find this video really, really useful, I would appreciate if you smash that like button that does wonders for the YouTube algorithm and the growth of my channel. And as always, I release a video every single week. So if you want to keep up to date with those, hit the subscribe button too. See you later. Bye.